Hi everyone, it's your boy Zach. Uh, so, I did a review on my other channel, Splato Delgato, where I counterintuitively review movies <laughs> instead of talk about my uh, company. But um, so I removed, I removed, I reviewed this movie Anna about a year ago when it came out, and uh, I don't really check that channel much, but that video has done really, really well for that channel. And uh, I've been watching this movie, you know, more as, you know, it comes on to uh, cable, it shows a lot, and uh, it just, you know, people love it, absolutely love it. The, uh, the writer-director got Me too like two weeks before the movie was uh, debuted, so it, it didn't do well in theaters, it was all the, all the press for it was just about the Me Too allegations, but it's, uh, it's very oddly kind of deep uh, movie, uh, which is basically about becoming a woman and deciding where you're going to go in the world, much more so than the trailers make it look like the, you know, umpteenth woman fighting, you know, 10 Navy SEALs type of movie. Um, so there's a lot of, you know, the expectations put upon her uh, and the way that she uses those. And um, there's a great line uh, by a kind of lover mentor character where uh, it appears like she's things aren't working out for her. And he says, you know, bide your time. Things will shift. Things will change. Old enemies will disappear. You're going to have your shot. Um, and it ends up working out that way. It's a really, really good movie. I highly recommend it. Uh, by the way, one thing that really has to be, uh, uh, what do they always say, educated, reexamined is Anna is a movie with a female lead with an actress who did an amazing job. And so as to punish the director, the entire movie of hundreds of people work and a debut that would have launched an entire career for Sasha Lust is uh, basically been erased. Although it is getting some really good traction. Like I've never spoken to one person who's seen that movie and not absolutely loved it. So, one of the things I used to say, and I still say it, but back in the day it was super controversial, is that when the companies are saying, like, uh, we need more women, so if you're a woman, apply, we need to hire women. And then I would say, they're hiring these women just because they're women. And, oh my gosh, that's so shocking. The funny thing is that now people send me these entire tweet threads where people are saying, you know, the women and uh, other minorities, although it's weird because women are 51% of the world, but... Um, uh, they, they're basically talking about realizing they've been hired, not for their talent, but for other reasons, realizing that everyone else in the room knows that in the writer's room or wherever they are, and they don't like it. It's not funny. It's not fun. Um, uh, but it also goes to uh, the characters. So what I'm saying is, though, this isn't just a neener neener, I was right the whole thing, the whole time, is that there are aspects of... They were right. It is difficult to be a woman in comics now. If you talk to Anne Nascenti and Louise Simonson and you know, these uh, trailblazers, and they were trailblazers for the 70s and 80s, but there were women in comics since you know 30s and 40s. They didn't have the, the issues that they have now, no pun intended, because they were just expected to write and sell. That was it. It's funny, I was watching this uh, interview with Jack Kirby the other day. Um, a really great uh, interview. But for, for some reason, it didn't have the option to share it. Although maybe I was just not logged in. <laughs> so I didn't do a video on it. They, they asked Jack Kirby what was his job. And his job was to sell comics. Now there's this concept of white privilege. In that, I don't know, things are easier for you. They're always changing the definition of it. But there is a kind of a male privilege where you just get to write and you're not expected to represent or have any real, you know, angle like that. You just write. Whereas when I read women writing, specifically women right now, you can feel the multiple like chains put around their neck and over their shoulders and draping over their arms like it's just, it's so difficult. They are put under so much pressure and extra responsibilities. This is not by the readers. It's by the woke 
press, the, the, the 12 psychos on Twitter, and their woke editors who did hire them a lot of the times simply because they're women. Now, some people step up to the plate. Some people get better. I have really memed the hell out of Mariko Tamaki for three years. She is getting better. The problem is they're not really incentivized. When you get hired because your identity X, as long as you remain identity X, you've kind of done your job. I mean, you weren't really hired to sell comics. So you're in this weird position where excelling, you know, it's it's like when you get the funny waiter. I didn't I didn't go here for humor, bro. I just want some food. No, no, funny waiter, go away. I don't know. That isn't that. What are you doing? Stop it. Um, but uh, <laughs> how female writers in the comic book industry are like the funny waiter. But so I'm reading this uh, Captain Marvel uh, written by uh, Sam Mags and not this is not Mags of Sagio. It's Sam Mags, a different entity. Um, and it's awful, but it's awful in this weird way. Like it's not egregiously incompetent. It's not really woke at all. It's 20 pages of women agreeing with each other, loving or being around each other and helping each other and just easily winning. It's, you also have this, I mean, so remember the supporting cast from the two failed and they just keep bringing them back. Why is there, why is there such a push to put women into STEM? medical field is out there like am i a joke to you <laughs> like there are things that more women naturally gravitate towards and there's no massive push to uh you know have uh men be uh teachers or nurses they're just isn't. those are fields where more women traditionally want to go into those fields for various reasons but it's I just feel like being a woman right now, it's like, you love science, right? And they're like bashing you in the head with like a physics textbook. You love it. You love it. No, I like helping people. No, you like helping science. Um, so you have the, uh, this, this is literally like the second panel these characters are in. Let me get this straight. Something you've literally never said. They're gay. Get it? They're gay. It's, you, remember when I was talking about the chains just draped everywhere? It's like, if you have two lesbian characters in a plot about saving the world, their sexuality must be at least referenced within, let's see if it's the first or second page. Second page. It's the top of the second page. Um, but yeah, the book is just... Women agreeing with each other and just loving each other and comp. There's a whole section of just complimenting the wasp who is not in this. It's Carol Danvers wearing an old costume about how amazed balls she was at designing this flying suit. You know, just, just going, going, yeah, just everything's going good. I think they actually do a, the sci. I think they do a, the science and the punching here. Of course, so is super punching. And it's just, yeah, it's not good. This, on the other hand, is we're getting a lot of things that are classic tropes for heroic fiction. The hero being in peril on the cover. It draws you in. If you have any kind of connection with this character, you're worried for her. She seems to re be restrained. She's got some radioactive whatever about to be injected into her eyeball and the needle is right there she's scared the guy behind her uh, is he's got these evil eyes what what's what's going on what's gonna happen this is good do you remember the cover of captain marvel that i clicked off i should have not clicked it off it was just two women just just crushing it it, it doesn't draw you in there's nothing there there's also some really good stuff, and I'm, some of this stuff is spoiler, but let's just say not all women are frenzies, and we get a lot of drama out of that. We actually get some surprises to find out one of her frenzy wensies wasn't and isn't. That's some really good dramatic stuff. 
Um, uh, the art is okay, I guess. Um, I guess Mariko Tamaki thing is she likes regular people, so there's a lot of like old people, fat people. Um, uh, so as a visual medium, you're kind of like, Meh. so uh, and also <laughs> she needs to do more research into the military besides playing war in the backyard once when she was a kid. Um, <laughs> a retired general can somehow reactivate and launch nuclear weapons by whatever. Fine. Uh, my only real issues with this are, please look at the screen, specifically uh, black women, please look at the screen. Do you feel represented by this version of Etta Candy? Do you look at Etta Candy and say, that's me, that is so me. <laughs> I like how last issue she was shown to be a staff sergeant in charge of this, you know, spy organization, but she's also an out of shape, very short staff sergeant in charge of a paramilitary, you know, organization in the, yeah, sometimes uh, we can redraw panels, can't we? We should. Sometimes we should. So anyway, uh, that Marvel action, Captain Marvel is definitely not a recommend, uh, but if if you're, I would say, if you really like Wonder Woman and you want a solid storyline that seems to be going somewhere with some eh, art, yeah, I would recommend this uh, Wonder Woman run. You have to, uh, female writers, throw off those chains put onto you by your, quote, allies. Uh, so anyway, thanks for watching. Subscribe. Make sure you're still subscribed. Hit the bell for notifications. Thanks to everyone given to the GoFundMe, Patreon, and the Indiegogo. You're funding original content and unoriginal lawsuit. Expendables to go to hell. Graphic novel. Oh, we're at 4,110 backers. Going to be a couple more days on this. Yes, I know I said that. Things change. <laughs> now I'm trying to decide. I can't. So I had a gimmick cover idea. Like a cool gimmick. But then I was like, it doesn't work because I had too many pages and that required there to be a staple. You can't do it if it's square bound. And then I come, came up with a, another gimmick cover, and it's very bold. <laughs> it's a very bold concept, um, but I think it will uh, work. So I'm excited about uh, finishing up that design. So uh, anyway, thanks for watching. Bye.